2022 is going to be an amazing year for gaming laptops. Uh, there's new GPUs, new CPUs, some amazing screen technology, thinner and sexier designs. I could just go on and on. But anyways, I want to talk about one of those new GPUs, the GeForce RTX 3080 Ti, its performance in games and creative apps, along with a bunch of new Max-Q technologies that cover everything from battery life to better thermal management from NVIDIA. Because when you combine all of those things together, you actually end up getting one of the fastest laptop GPUs around. And yes, we can finally say that laptops can equal some of the best gaming desktops around, but more on that later. I also have to give a huge shout out to NVIDIA here as well. They're also allowing us to get a bit of an early look before these devices launch tomorrow. So don't take this as a full review because that's gonna be coming really soon. But rather consider this as a bit of a teaser covering some performance and the technology behind NVIDIA's latest laptop GPUs. Anyways, the TI's approach is pretty simple. This is basically an RTX 3080 on steroids, but it still operates at about the same power limit depending on each laptop's design. It also comes standard with 16 gigabytes of faster GDDR6 memory operating across a 256-bit memory interface. Now, don't think the RTX 3080 is going anywhere either because it's still gonna be available. The TI's version is simply meant to be popped into the best of the best laptops from every brand. Now, now, when you compare that to a two-year-old RTX 2080 Super, and honestly, it's on a whole other level, especially since you're getting the Amphere's architecture, second-generation RT technology, and third-generation Tensor Cores. I should also mention that NVIDIA is coming out with an RTX 3070 Ti as well. It's a step upwards from the standard RTX 3070 in every way. You'll start to see this thing in laptops next month, and like the 3080 Ti, it won't be replacing the existing model either. All right, so now that we know what we're dealing with, let's talk a little bit about what I'm gonna be testing here because I wanted it to be relevant for folks who might be looking for an upgrade from a bit of an older system, but at the same time, I wanted as much of an apples to apples comparison as possible. So in one corner, we have the Razer Blade Pro 17 that was launched back in 2020 with an RTX 2080 Super and an Intel Core i7-10875H. And on the other end, we have this. It's the 2022 version of that same 17-inch laptop, and along with some minor design changes and a drop-dead beautiful Quad HD 240Hz display, it's got an RTX 3080 Ti and Intel's brand new Alder Lake Core i7-12800H. I should also mention that all of these new pieces of tech are being added to all of NVIDIA's 2022 models, so it's not just RTX 3080 Ti and RTX 3070 Ti designs. The first few stops for this video are about some of NVIDIA's new technologies that fall under the fourth generation Max-Q umbrella. Now those are new CPU optimizer and rapid core scaling, and I'll be covering Battery Boost 2.0 a little bit later. CPU optimizer is a solution to a problem that has been around forever. You see, in a confined space like inside a laptop, power, heat, and all of the components need to be managed together. Uh, if the CPU is left completely on its own, it'll actually tend to run at the highest possible speeds, whether it's necessary or not. So that means in gaming and creator-focused apps, it could be gobbling up cooling and power resources that could be better used by the GPU. NVIDIA's CPU optimizer works in a few ways. First of all, it takes control of the CPU and it dynamically shifts power based on specific workloads. For example, uh, if it sees a game like CSGO becoming processor bottlenecked, it'll allow the CPU to run at higher speeds, whereas a game that's graphics limited will see lower CPU speeds but higher GPU frequencies. There's also been a general streamlining of drivers, so they gobble up less system resources. Uh, but the most interesting thing is NVIDIA's enabled a small command process on their chips that allow for the processor to offload some low-level work. So that means more CPU cycles are freed up and that technically leads to better overall performance while also saving power. Now that runs alongside NVIDIA's rapid core scaling and that sort of works in the same way, but within the GPU itself. Uh, but when the laptop's running on battery, it prioritizes power to the best cores for every situation so they can operate at the highest possible speeds. But anyways, one of my pet peeves about gaming laptops is so many of them end up sounding like jet fans. Well, that's where NVIDIA's Whisper Mode 2.0, which was actually introduced last year, comes into things because it dynamically balances performance with system acoustics and temperatures. It's also been tuned to impact idle states too, so that's super important since the last thing someone wants is a loud laptop when they're doing simple things. And one of the major complaints I had about the Blade 17 back in 2020 was that it was pretty loud. But it looks like there's been some really positive changes with whisper mode, along with some changes to the cooling system, because this thing's a lot better on the ears now. Not only that, but temperatures are also kept really well in check with the newer Blade 17 getting about the same 
or lower temperatures, but at those lower noise levels than the older one. And this is exactly what I want to see as technology improves. So what does this all mean in terms of real world performance between the 2020 Blade 17 and this new one that you can buy in a few days? Well, let's start with some of the programs that I use on a daily basis. And honestly, the difference between the two is like night and day for content creators. And as someone who lives this every single day, I think this is probably what I'm most excited about, guys. In almost every single case, we're looking at cutting down render times by half with the biggest time savings going to Houdini that pretty much maxes out the CPU and the GPU in parallel. The gap in Resolve is a bit smaller, but that's because we're actually running up against an application bottleneck rather than a hardware one. Moving on to gaming at 1440p, and the frame rates point towards an improvement of between 35% all the way up to almost double depending on the game you're playing. In some cases, the minimum frame rates on the new laptop beats the average of the old one. Some of this is probably due to NVIDIA's advanced Optimus that completely bypasses the RGP, a lot like a MUX switch would. So that would end up leading to lower system latency and tends to really improve frame rates in CPU limited games like CSGO, Rainbow Six, and Dune. So basically, it's a big deal for competitive shooters where you rely on ultra high frame rates for a competitive advantage. Now, just to give you an idea of what we're looking at here, if I go through our archives of desktop results, this is about as fast, give or take a few FPS here and there, as an RTX 3070 Ti paired up with a Ryzen 9 5900X. That's crazy. And of course, with a system like this, you'd be able to expect to run ray tracing, and in many cases, the performance gains between the 2020 and 2022 system gets even bigger. A lot of that's due to the second generation RT cores simply being more efficient than the ones in the RTX 2080 Super. But either way, if you want to get a taste of what ray tracing brings to the table, the RTX 3080 Ti is your best bet right now. Of course, you can also turn on DLSS on top of that, and that pretty much ends up bringing performance back up by a whole lot on the RTX 3080 Ti. I should also mention that I'm in the highest quality mode for DLSS here, and if you wanted an even higher jump upwards in frame rates, you could set the games to balanced performance or ultra performance. Pair your new CPU with Lexer's new Hades RGB DDR4 memory kit. The vibrant RGB lighting adds a nice glow to your gaming experience. The sleek aluminum heatsink keeps temperatures under control while blending in with the rest of your PC hardware. Learn more down below. Now, one of my biggest issues that I've run with Windows laptops is how performance completely tanks when they're running on battery power. Now, this isn't a component issue, but rather it's done to conserve the battery lifespan since hitting it with a massive power consumption tends to destroy cell life in no time. So getting around that limitation isn't easy, but Nvidia is rolling out their Battery Boost 2.0 technology that's supposed to balance discharge rate and battery lifespan and overall performance. Now, the idea here is to make every game playable at minimum of 30 frames per second without being plugged in. Getting there actually needs a few steps, starting with installing GeForce Experience, where you'll need to click on the gear icon right over here and then enable it and then head back to the main screen and select details, go into on battery and hit optimize and you'll see the settings change to the ones NVIDIA things are optimal for their battery boost algorithm. Now from the few games that I tried, it seems to deliver exactly what NVIDIA promised and that's a big improvement over what I've seen in the past. You just need to take into account that these results can vary from one laptop to another and it might even impact by the age of the battery. So that pretty much wraps us up, guys. And honestly, it is just amazing to see what two years of evolution has accomplished for laptops. This is just the tip of the iceberg too, because over the next few weeks and months, we'll be looking at a whole lot more. But I also wanted to know what you guys think. Let me know if there are any laptops that you're excited about and if there is anything that you want us to check out. Um, comments are open, I'm curious to know. And on that note, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.